In this exam paper talk through, I'm going through a CIE IGCSE paper six alternative to practical and we're doing the November 2017 paper for chemistry. Cerucite is a lead ore which contains lead two carbonates. A student obtained a solution of lead two nitrate from cerucite using the apparatus shown. Complete the boxes to name the apparatus. Okay, so you must learn all your key chemistry equipment off by heart. These are easy marks that you don't want to miss out on. So firstly, the thing which does the crushing is known as the pestle, and the bowl that you do the crushing in is the mortar. Next up, what are we using to drip that dilute acid? Well, that is a pipette. Why was the cerucite crushed in step one? Well, if we crush it, that means we're basically increasing its surface area because you're taking larger blobs and making them much smaller. So to increase its surface area. Name the dilute acid used in step two. The clue here is the fact that we're making nitrate. So in order to produce a nitrate, we need nitric acid. What is the general name given to an insoluble solid left on a filter paper after filtration? It's the residue. So that is the stuff left behind. You can use residue in everyday English as well. Suggest how a sample of lead could be obtained from the solution of lead to nitrate. So effectively, we need to displace the lead. How do you do that? By using a more reactive metal, make sure you name one. So we're going to add a more reactive metal So make sure you've learned your reactivity series off by heart. Pick a sensible one, one that isn't too reactive and is therefore too dangerous. So something like magnesium would work well here. And then we're going to just say which displaces the lead. Make sure we're hitting the two marks. So you need to make two separate points. Don't just repeat the same one. A student investigated what happened to the temperature when two different solids, W and X, dissolved in water. Two experiments were carried out. Experiment one. Using a measuring cylinder, 30 centimetres cubed of distilled water was poured into a polystyrene cup. The initial temperature of the water was measured at time zero. Solid W was added to the water and a timer was started. The solution was stirred with a thermometer. The temperature of the solution was measured every 10 seconds for 90 seconds. Use the thermometer diagrams to record the temperatures in the table. So each of those incremental lines stands for one. So that means one, two, three, that is 23 degrees. 16 degrees, 14 degrees, 13 degrees, 12 degrees, and then leveling out at 11 degrees for each of these. Experiment two, the polystyrene cup was emptied and minced with water. Experiment one was repeated using solid X. The temperature of the solution was measured every 10 seconds for 90 seconds. Use the thermometer diagrams to record the temperatures in the table. So again, make sure you're reading it nice and accurately. 22, 26, 29, 31, 32, 33, 34, and then leveling out at 35 degrees Celsius. Plot the results of experiments one and two on the grid. Drew two smooth line graphs, clearly label your lines. So I'm gonna choose two different colors in order to do this. So starting with the first set of results, at time zero, our temperature was 23. Two boxes stands for one degrees, so that would be 21, 22, 23. At 10 seconds, we have 16. At 20 seconds, we have 14. At 30, we have 13. 40 seconds, we have 12. And then we level out at 11, so that's for 50 seconds, 60 seconds, 70 seconds, 80 seconds, and 90 seconds. We need to draw a smooth graph line. I'm going to struggle to do this on the iPad. Let's have a key. So this is experiment one. I'm going to change colour to purple. Our first reading was 22 degrees at zero time. Then we went up to 26, followed by 29, 31, 32, 33, 34 and then leveling out at 35. Using a smooth line again, 
and that is experiment 2. From your graph, deduce the temperature of the solution experiment 1 after 15 seconds. Show clearly on the grid how you worked out your answer. So we have to draw lines showing how we work this out. So 15 seconds is here. So I'm drawing a line up to show how I arrived at 15 degrees Celsius as my temperature. From your graph, deduce the time taken for the temperature of the solution experiment 2 to change by 6 degrees from the initial temperature. Show clearly on the grid how you worked out your answer. Okay, so for experiment 2, that was the purple line, we need it to change by 6 degrees Celsius. So that effectively means we need to go up from 22 degrees here to 28 degrees, which is here. Let's draw that reference line down and read off the x-axis. Reading off the x-axis, that gives us the time of around 17 seconds. Use the results to identify the type of energy change that occurs when solid X dissolves in water. Now, solid X was used in experiment two, so it's the purple graph line. We can see that it's gotten hotter. What gives out heat energy? Well, that is an exothermic reaction. Predict the temperature of the solution in experiment two after one hour. Explain your answer. So looking at that purple line again after an hour, well, an hour is quite a long time. It will have fallen to approximately room temperature because the reaction has finished well and truly by then. What is room temperature? Well, it's approximately 21 degrees. We need to explain our answer and that's due to the reaction. Finishing. State two sources of errors in these experiments. Give one improvement to reduce of each of these sources of error. Well, with these sorts of experiments, the problem is always heat loss to the surroundings. So the thing you want to do here is add a lid to prevent convection currents being set up, which cause heat loss further. Another easy thing to point out is the fact that they only did the experiment once, so basically just repeat. So repeat and calculate an average. Other things you could have mentioned is the fact they used a measuring cylinder. Remember this is a fairly inaccurate piece of apparatus, so instead they could have used a pipette or a burette. Other problems could include using different masses of solid, so obviously your improvement would be to use the same mass of solid and ensure that by using a measuring balance. When carrying out the experiments, what would be the disadvantage of taking the temperature readings only every 30 seconds? Basically, you're taking fewer readings, so your graph will be less accurate. Two solutions, Y and Z, were analysed. Solution Y was aqueous chromium-3 nitrate. Tests were carried out on both solutions. Tests on solution Y. Complete the expected observations. The solution was divided into two equal portions and two test tubes. A few drops of aqueous sodium hydroxide were added to the first portion of solution Y and the test tube was shaken to mix the solutions. What are your observations? Well, we know that Y is chromium nitrate. Remember that chromium-3 produces a green precipitate when sodium hydroxide is added to it. An excess of aqueous sodium hydroxide was then added to the mixture. What are your observations? Actually, the precipitate dissolves. It effectively disappears. The mixture from A part 2 was poured into a boiling tube and a small piece of aluminium foil was added. The mixture was heated and the gas producer was tested. What would your observations be here? Okay, so with this answer, you have to be very aware of a particular experiment, which is that nitrate ions are reduced to ammonia if you react the compound containing nitrate with firstly sodium hydroxide and then aluminium foil. So actually you're going to produce a gas, so fizzing will occur. And remember that ammonia is alkali, so red litmus paper will turn blue. Identify the gas produced. Okay, I've already mentioned that. That is ammonia. So choking, fairly toxic gas.
Tests on solution Z, tests were carried out and the following observations were made. Solution Z was divided into three equal portions in three test tubes. Test 1, the pH of the first portion of the solution Z was tested and we've got a high pH so I know it's going to be an alkali. So with test 2, a few drops of the aqueous copper 2 sulfate were added to the second portion of solution Z. An excess of aqueous copper 2 sulfate was then added to the mixture. So we've got a dark blue solution followed by a light blue solution. Now I'm thinking that Z must be ammonia, but I need to double check. I'm happy with test one. Test two could be true. Let's look at test three now. The second portion of solution Y, which we know was chromium three nitrate from the question, it actually specified that. And we're adding that to a third portion of solution Z. Well, say that that was ammonia. What happens when ammonia reacts with nitrate ions is you produce a gray green precipitate so based on that, I think that Z is ammonia. Washing soda crystals are crystals of hydrated sodium carbonate. When exposed to the air, some of the water is lost from the crystals and a new substance is formed. This process occurs faster in hotter climates. Plan an experiment to determine the percentage of water by mass present in the new substance. You are provided with common laboratory apparatus. So effectively, we need to work out how much water was present and we need a way of getting rid of that water. So effectively, we need to describe a heating to dryness method. So first of all, we need to weigh out 10 grams of washing soda. It doesn't matter what, what mass you choose, just pick a sensible one. Then we need to heat it in order to remove the water of crystallization. So we could do that using a evaporating basin over a tripod and Bunsen burner. Next step, collect the water using a condenser and allow it to cool. And then you want to weigh the remaining solid, so the remaining soda. And then we want to repeat it, so repeat the heating process, reweigh, and repeat the process until the solid mass remains the same because that means all the water has been driven off. 